Hi, everyone. How are you? <laughs> this is Tavi. Tavi. Hey. <laughs> so we wanted to talk to you today about what it means to be what you would consider a millennial. Uh, so, <laughs> so when, so like, like Scott was saying, you're you're kind of everything, right? You're um, a podcast host. You're an actress. But why do you think that a lot of the people in this room call you a millennial, and how does that make you feel as someone in that group? Um, well, I guess it's the kind of term that was at one point, or maybe continues to be useful in just referring to a group of people who are all the same age, and then um, maybe mutated into something that like has connotations that aren't necessarily a part of being that age. Mm -hmm. um, and also now, like now I'm, I keep hearing like generation, that I have to be thinking about generation Z, and I'm like, what comes after that? Because um, that's the end of the alphabet. But um, <laughs> I guess the thing that I always think about is that, um, I mean, I don't really feel defined. I mean, I don't, it's impossible to speak for people for a whole generation or people who are all the same age. And um, at the same time that I hold that in my head, I also know that part of my job at Rookie and why I started it was to empower young people so that they're not just consuming and like kind of powerless in that way all the time, but are also making their own stuff or they're at least reading things that make them feel better about themselves. Um, so, but we hear from a lot of adults who are like, oh, I read Rookie every day, or it still really helps me in my life, and not because uh, they're like, oh, it reminds me of how great high school was, but because <laughs> there seem to be a few um, things about life that you never really figure out. And I have found that, um, Anyway, I don't know, I don't remember what, oh, do I feel like a millennial? I just feel like um, anytime I worry about uh, continuing to reach a teen audience or millennials, it feels so um, silly because I'm like, I'm only gonna get further away from that age group. Um, and I really just try to think about the fact that like, a lot of the teenagers I work with or follow online and a lot of the adults I work with or follow or who read Rookie are all reading the same stuff, watching the same shows. Like, if there's anyone I know who's really obsessed with new technology and needs the new thing, it's like my dad. Like, have you noticed how people, I, I don't know, but like people I know in that age group are like, I love my iPhone and people my age I have found the ones I know are like, oh, I'm so tired of my phone. I want something meaningful and something of substance. And I want to stop like looking at my phone and scrolling through stuff that makes me hate myself. So I just try to make things or create a space where writers and artists can make things that maybe address what young people are going through but are not about being young in the sense that we're like scrambling to figure out what's like new or cool uh, because that, I'm like, I don't want to think about that. I don't, I don't think I really can. <laughs> so like, how do you, what's your strategy, I guess, then for um, interacting with your audience? Do you find that certain platforms work better for certain people, or do you find that um, there's a certain tone that you give of almost authenticity that lets people uh, feel like they really can connect with you? Yeah, I think it's about whether something is as expansive as a long form essay or as brief as like an Instagram caption. Our readers know when it feels like rookie and when it doesn't. Um, and I always think about like, you know, uh, this might be a bit of a stretch, but like there's a Charlie Kaufman lecture where he's like, if you're writing a movie, know why you're making a movie and not a play or an essay or a novel or a short story. So with everything we do, whether it's working on developing an app or our social media or the content on the site or our new podcast, I'm like, know what about this makes this a, a good opportunity and what we can do on the podcast that we can't do 
in writing or what we can do on social that we can't do um, on a website. So I guess what makes readers feel like, you know, readers call Rookie their Bible, their big sister, their best friend, their teacher. Um, so I just try to think, uh, it's more the second thing you said, that it's about do being really thorough and careful about everything, um, like having really sharp editors and contributors who uh, know the, you know, the value of what they're saying and use words meaningfully and don't just shoot out like generic kind of, hey, look at this speak. Um, and readers really respond to that. I mean, obviously people who have grown up with Instagram since they were like 10 are really literate in just the way words look and when it feels like they're being condescended to or, or something like that. So, um, I just basically think that the thing I keep thinking about is like Kenneth Lonergan did, uh, had an interview where he said he uses teenagers a lot in his, he didn't say millennials, but we could say millennials, um, in his work because in a play or in a movie or something, a teenager can be a pretty good metaphor for a half formed person coping with the world. Um, and I just, and that's the only way I know to explain why so many adults like Rookie or why kids don't seem to grow out of it um, because we just try to create spaces for really talented people to tell their stories and do their work and share the universes that are in their heads. And it seems to be relatable for people of many ages. Awesome. Thank you so much to Tavi for coming and thank, thank you, you so much for having us. Thanks. <laughs>